Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Today we are solving radical equations. The first part is going to be really straightforward and simple. We're going to solve a radical equation basically the same way we would solve any other equation. The second half of this video is about an extraneous solution. So follow along with me. Ready? It says here for our directions, isolate the radical. So isolate the radical, get the radical to be by itself, and then square both sides of the equation to solve. Now right now we don't know exactly what that means, but as soon as we get to that part, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And you'll see it's actually pretty easy. So here I have the square root of x plus 4 equals 7. My whole concept of solving this equation revolves around isolating the radical. So I need to get radical x to be by itself. Well, we know in regular solving equation rules, we would subtract 4 on both sides to get x by itself, or in this case, radical x by itself. And we have the square root of x equals 3. Now, we've previously learned that to undo squaring something would mean to take the square root. Squaring and square root, they're opposite operations. So if I have a square root and I want to undo it and get rid of it, I need to actually square both sides of my equation. Now, when we do this, the square root and the squared symbol, I'm going to grab my pen here, actually cancel each other out because they're opposite operations. And I'm left with my answer of x equaling 3 squared is 9. And it makes complete sense. Think about if I plug 9 back in here. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. So it works out perfectly. Let's take a look at the next one. Square root of x plus 2 minus 3 equals 10. So I need to get this radical to be by itself. I've got this negative 3 on the same side of the equation, so I'm going to go ahead and add 3 on both sides. I'm then left with the square root of x plus 2 equals 13. Now once I have the radical by itself, now please don't subtract 2 because you can't. It's the square root of x plus 2, that entire expression. So that 2 isn't by itself. It wasn't like this 4 over here that we could just move away. Once I get the radical by itself, I square both sides. Remember, the square root and the squared symbol cancel each other out. I'm then left with x plus 2 equals 13 squared, which is 169. Let's solve for x. Let's now subtract 2 on both sides, and we get our answer of 167, which if I was to check, and plug 167 in here, 167 plus 2 is 169, the square root of 169 is 13, and 13 minus 3 is 10. The next two, 5 equals the square root of x over 4, or divided by 4 really. What's the opposite operation of dividing by 4? It would be multiplying both sides by 4. So if I go ahead and I multiply both sides by 4, I'm then left with 20 equals the square root of x. I've got my radical by itself. I'm going to go ahead and square both sides. And if I do that, 20 squared is 400, and that's my answer. x equals 400. Next one, 8 plus the square root of x minus 3 equals 15. I want to get the radical by itself, so I go ahead and I subtract 8 on both sides. Once I have the radical by itself, I can go ahead and square both sides. Remember, squaring a radical means that those operations are now gone. I'm left with x minus 3 equals 49, add 3 on both sides, and I get x equals 52. Pretty straightforward problem. Remember, the whole purpose of each one of these is just get the radical to be by itself. All right, so 10 minus 2 times the square root of x minus 4 equals negative 8. So first I notice I've got this 10, which I need to get rid of definitely first, so let's get rid of that. But then I notice I have negative 2 being multiplied by the square root of x minus 4. So the next thing I need to do is actually divide both sides by a negative 2. That way, my radical is officially by itself. We know that once we get the radical by itself, we can know it, go ahead then and square both sides. We know now at this point the square root and the squared symbol are opposite operations. They cancel each other out. And we're left with x minus 4 equals 81. Add 4 on both sides. Whoops. Add 4 on both sides, and we get x equals 85. Now, next two. Square root of x minus 4 equals negative 10. So we want to get the radical by itself. We add 4 on both sides, and we get square root of x equals negative 6. Now, think about this. Could the square root of any number ever give you a negative? Absolutely not. Like, look up here. The square root of some x minus 3 can give you 7. The square root of some number could give you 20. 
the square root of x minus 4 could be equal to 9, but the square root of x cannot be equal to negative 6, at least for Algebra 1 purposes. Right now when we're dealing with real numbers. In Algebra 2, you're going to learn how to do this problem a different kind of way. But for right now, we're going to see that there's no solution. There's no real solution. There's no real number that I could take the square root of and get a negative 6 out of. So that's something we want to be extra careful about. The next one. If I've got negative 3, radical x equals negative 9. So I want to get radical. I want to divide both sides by negative 3. I get the square root of x equals 3. Square both sides. I can get 9. So here's the difference. I don't want you to think that just because anytime any equation is set equal to a negative, it's going to be no solution. This radical was not isolated first yet. After you isolate the radical, then you can really tell. So if it's the radical x or square root of x equals a negative, that's when it's no solution. But if it's the square root of x and you actually get it equal to a positive, then you can answer it. So just because this problem number 7 originally, before I went forward, was equal to a negative, you can still find a solution. Now let's talk about part 2, what it means to have an extraneous solution. Back in elementary school, you were taught how to read a paragraph and then cross out any extraneous information. So like, for example, if you said Olivia was going to the store to buy ingredients for an apple pie, she went down to buy the apples, she picked up five apples, she bought the crust, she then tied her shoe, she then bought four packages of sauce and syrup. How many, prob how many items did she buy at the store? Well, we care about the apples, we care about the packages of syrup and sugar or whatever, and we care about the crust, but obviously her bending down a tire shoe had nothing to do with the problem. That's extraneous information. Extraneous solutions are solutions that we're going to get mathematically. We're going to do all of our algebra work, but we're actually going to discover they don't give us a true statement, which is interesting. We've never dealt with that before yet. So follow along with me. x minus 1 is equal to the square root of x plus 1. Now we know to solve a radical equation, you have to get the radical to be isolated, which it is. And once the radical is isolated, we can go ahead and square both sides. But remember now, this is now x minus 1 squared. To square a binomial would mean to do multiply the first term, get x squared, multiply these two terms together, and double it. Remember, this is that special pattern trick to get the answer quickly. So x times negative 1 is negative 1x. Double it, you get negative 2x. And then you square your last term, plus 1. The square root and the squared symbol here simplify each other out and we're left with just x plus 1. We've got a polynomial equation. Step 1 in solving a polynomial equation, set the equation equal to 0. So I'm going to go ahead and start moving everything to the left-hand side. I'm going to subtract x to get x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 1. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1 on both sides to get x squared minus 3x equals 0. Step 1 in solving a polynomial equation, set it equal to 0. Step 2, factor. It's a binomial. I check for a GCF. I do have a GCF here. It's x. If I factor out an x, I'm left with x times x minus 3 equals 0. Step 3, set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So if I set x equal to 0, it's just 0. If I set x minus 3 equal to 0, I get 3. Now, we have to check. So in the other problems, I was checking. I was mentally just plugging them in. All I care about is this original equation, guys. I'm going to just focus up here right now. Let's say I plugged in a 0. What's 0 minus 1? Negative 1. Can a square root of any number ever equal a negative 1? No. If I plugged in 0 here, 0 plus 1 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. So when I plug in a 0, it actually doesn't work. Let's plug in a 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay, if I plug that same 3 in here, 3 plus 1 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So this one actually works. So 0 would be an extraneous solution. It's a solution that we get when we solve it algebraically, but it actually doesn't work out. Let's try the next one. 
y equals the square root of y plus 2. So we have the radical isolated. We're going to go ahead and square both sides. This then becomes y squared equals the square root and the squared simplify each other out. So we're left with y plus 2. We now have a polynomial equation, step 1. Set the equation equal to 0. Remember when we do that, we send everything to the side of the highest exponent. So I'm going to send that y plus 2 over to the y squared. So this will now become y squared minus y minus 2 equals 0. I have a trinomial. I have to factor it. Factor pair to get negative 2. That adds up to get negative 1. Well, the only way to multiply to get a negative 2 is a 1 and a 2. Which one needs to be negative? So I get a negative 1 when I add them. Should be the 2. So you get y minus 2, y plus 1. It's this trinomial factored. We set each factor equal to 0. If I set y minus 2 equal to 0, I'm going to get y equals 2. If I set y minus um, y plus 1 rather equal to 0, I'm going to get negative 1. Now remember, we check our solutions. If I plug in a 2, 2 is equal to 2 plus 2 and the square root of it. 2 plus 2 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So 2 equals 2. That checks. Let's try the negative 1. If I plug in a negative 1 here, immediately, can negative 1 ever be equal to the square root of a number? No, because the square root of a number is always positive. So this one doesn't work. 2 is just my answer. Okay, I've got two other problems here. If you want to try them out, press pause or just keep playing. I've got my radical isolated, so I need to square both sides. We know the square root and squared simplify each other out. So I've got x plus 5 equals. Remember squaring a binomial. You square the first term, x squared. You multiply x times negative 1, and then you double it to get negative 2x. You square the last term, positive 1. We then set the equation equal to 0. You always send everything to the highest exponent. So I'm going to subtract x on both sides to get 5 equals x squared minus 3x plus 1. I'm then going to subtract 5 on both sides. I now have this trinomial. It's an equation set equal to 0. What factor pair of negative 4 will get me negative 3? 1 and 4 or 2 and 2? 1 and 4. Which one needs to be negative? So when you add them up, you get a negative 3. It should be a negative 4. So this becomes x minus 4, x plus 1. If I set x minus 4 equal to 0, I get a solution of 4. If I set x minus x plus 1 equal to 0, I get negative 1. Let's go ahead and plug these in. If I plug in a 4, 4 plus 5 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. If I plug that 4 in here, 4 minus 1 is 3. So x plus 4 works. Look at negative 1. Negative 1 plus 5 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. If I plug in a negative 1 here, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So this one actually doesn't work, and I just am left with 4. Last example for us. I've got my radical isolated. I'm going to go ahead and square both sides. We know at this point the square root and the squared simplify each other out. So I'm left with 8 minus c equals, remember, square the first term to get c squared. Multiply this together, so c times negative 8 and double it to get negative 16c. Square the last term, positive 64. We then set the equation equal to 0, so I'm going to go ahead, move that 8 to the other side. I'm then going to add c. So now I'm left with this trinomial. Factor pairs of 56, that'll get me negative 15. 1 and 56, no. 2, 28, no. 4 times 14, no. 7 times 8, yep. What kind of 7 and 8 do you need to get a negative? Both negative. So negative 8, negative 7. C minus 8 would give me C equals 8. C minus 7 would give me C equals 7. And now look, if I plug these in, plug in an 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. 8 minus 8 is 0. Okay, so 8 works. 7. 8 minus 7 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. 7 minus 8 is negative 1. So 7 actually doesn't work. Now, previously, did you notice all the answers were the positive one worked, the negative one didn't work? Well, here we actually had two positive answers, and still one of them did not work. So always be careful about that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you. I know it's a lot of information. Rewatch if you need to. Thank you. Bye.